of the no. A few days ago on Facebook, I noticed uh, Jack Rudd uh, had commented um, about loving the smell of freshly crushed Grandmaster. And it got my curiosity going. What was the game uh, like? You know, I, I didn't see the game at all. You know, was it an E4? Was it a D4? You know, what tournament was it? And and stuff like that. And I didn't immediately like investigate it, but um, the thought occurred to me to check it out today. And it was in the E2, E4 Sunningdale International Master Tournament. So E2, E4 are doing quite a few FIDE uh, tournaments in the UK, which maybe I should uh, participate in pretty soon. So this was the International Masters A section, the top section. And he was up against El Elzebar um, Ubilava, um, Ubilava 2533 three GM. And Jack Rudd's uh, FIDE here is listed as 2278. Um, so he's an international master, a bit low low rate at the moment, but uh, this this win certainly wouldn't have harmed his FIDE rating. So let's have a look at it. Many of his games are, are often entertaining and very attacking um, style to them. So e4, c5, and Jack um, is not afraid to go into the main line Sicilian, none of this sideline stuff. And I'm thinking myself, I'm going to have to drop this knight c3 and f4 business from bullet. I think it's just bad habit. I think mean, going into the main um, line, you're really uh, trying to fight for the center when you play knight f3 in the early d4. Okay, and there's millions of, of lines black can do after, but um, you know, if you want to like hack and slay an opponent and a grandmaster, this this is in style. This game is really stylish. Uh, okay, as, as it unfolds. So c takes, knight takes. Uh, so black just attacks the pawn, white defends. <clears throat> and now I think this is the old classical method of just developing the other knight to c6. So what does Jack do? Well, he plays it a bit uh, 70s style, you know, fischer sozin kind of style with bishop c4. So um, none of this like um, English, you know, system attack, but bishop c4 has a few points to it, which are kind of interesting, actually. That if black is going to sort of uh, create blockage for the bishop on the diagonal, then can white you know undermine this e6 pawn later and what would be the consequences of that um, and can white still go for a kind of hack and slay attack with this system castling queen side or uh, are we you know looking at casting king side usually in this system with bishop c4 so there's a few questions here um, after e6 in fact white shows he's prepared not just to castle king side but Optionally, you know, maybe queenside now with bishop e3, making way for the queen to move somewhere and then casting queenside. So, a very exciting position. And black waits, he's not too keen to try and castle kingside. He waits with this waiting move a6, which is, you know, very useful in its own right, of course, for later, you know, maybe taking on d4 and then the classic b5 and bishop b7 and pressure on e4. Okay. So the move chosen for the queen, actually, not casting king side, the move chosen for the queen is actually e2. Now this has some clear advantage over d2 in that knight g4 is, of course, ruled out. The queen is attacking g4. So that's one advantage, I think, of queen e2. Okay, so queen c7 from black. The other advantage is, is now shown that the queen's also protecting c4. Uh, so knight takes d4 is not an immediate like winning threat. So white doesn't have to retreat the bishop from c4 at the moment. Actually, uh, jack just castles queen side. And now um, black plays very aggressively, doesn't bother developing uh, this bishop, just goes all in for the attack with this move, it seems, with knight a5, knight a5. The bishop doesn't retreat, though, to b3. This is another interesting decision. Um, and it's it's maybe a little bit counterintuitive in that respect. But on the other hand, bishop d3, where it went to instead of b3, does protect e4. So b5, b4, you know, bishop b7, white might not have to waste time, you know, protecting e4 as much. Um, and in fact, now after b5, just in case b4 is going to dislodge this knight, a3 is played. 
I think Fisher in, in 16 memorable games uh, said in one particular game that A3 was kind of essential. But I think one's got to be quite wary about playing it sometimes. You know, it does lose lose time a bit. If there's better things to do, then you know, it's all time related. It's critical. So Bishop E7 from Black now, not actually Bishop B7, not yet intensifying pressure on E4. And now we see F4 from Jack. And now Rook B8, as though Black is not going to castle King, so he's going to carry on his attack a little bit. Maybe with B4 looks a bit menacing. But white's not too scared about this. White now unleashes this aggressive looking move, g4, g4. So <laughs> it's really got, uh, this is a really violent scenario now we have in this position, if we if we have a look at it. Um, is black really gonna castle into this, into this pawn storm, you know, with g5, you know, ready to smash the black uh, fortress to bits? Um, no, he, he actually delays again, knight c4, and now after g5 the knight swings to d7, which may be, you know, may be useful for knight c5 or knight b6. After rook he1, actually it's here with this rook move that black becomes a bit confident about castling on the king side. And you might think it's going to take time actually to, to blast through to the black king, um, but there's actually a little t tactical vulnerability here. This queen and bishop positioning is is asking for a knight fork. So how would you arrange a knight fork? Well, Jack finds an ingenious move here, um, which um, is is this one: knight f5. So knight f5 offering a knight to get this knight fork. But actually, you know, the queen is protecting the bishop. So we're talking a whole knight sack. So that's not really the main point. The point was to drive back these attacking resources. So these guys are left, you know, without the queen as the kind of centre forward. Where's the attack on, 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 on White's queen side? And White, on the other hand, has got the centre forward ready to come in. You know, the queen coming in with, with, with the infantry here, ready to support it, and the knight ready to support it. So E takes F5, very exciting compensation for the knight. Tells all oh, Ness Magistov would be proud, I think, with this knight sack. But surely you might ask, hold on a sec, hold on. The knight can be dislodged from d5. Bishop b7 dislodged that knight. And now we get another beautiful idea. So just taking on c4 gives white time now for this nice next move uh, where the knight can actually take on e7 very comfortably, distracting another piece at the same time away from black's king side. Bishop b6. So this knight's been distracted away from defensive duties. After knight e7, look at black's king. It's ready for the slaughter, it seems. Queen h5, the centre forward coming in, the queen. Look at black's attack by comparison. White's king is not really worried by anything here. Black has to deal with numerous uh, threats. Tries to deal, it, deal with it with knight d5, offering um, like a, a piece back. But uh, Jack is not too tempted by taking on d5 uh, here. Instead, you know, he's going for the king. He's going for the kill. He plays f6. And apparently, <laughs> um, I think it's here that um, I think uh, an engine was saying almost this is equal with g6 technically. There's a technical reason for that. But this next option gives white a huge advantage uh, so I think g6 technically should have been played here uh, with some sharp sharp stuff ensuing after that but it said g takes f6 and now the knight on e7 uh, is made use of with this next move g6 ripping through the black king position so immediately threatening mate so fg and now knight takes g6 and now this beautiful move Rook g1, keeping a lot of frets on. Queen b6. If black's given time, may, you know, maybe there's going to be an attack on b2, but black's not going to be given time. It's all running with check now from this position. Knight takes f8, check. 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 Encouraging f5. And now this, this is really nifty. Check check 
and now Queen E6 check and Black resigns. Now the idea of Queen E6 is is not uh, the routine like Rook G1 in this position. If we carried through here, if Black didn't resign, if he played here, I don't think this is good. This this would be rudely uh, responded to with Queen E3 check, and uh, that'd be really annoying. No, I think uh, much easier <laughs> here is just carrying on uh, getting the lawnmower effect check. Take that, taking that pawn, and then check. It doesn't matter if Black sacks Queen, and then you know a mating thing would ensue on 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 the H file. So Black's King's really torn apart in this game. Uh, so that was a really nice open Sicilian, which is kind of inspiring. You know, if if you've been playing these sidelines, you know sometimes having the guts to play, you know, the open variation of Sicilian, even against the, the grandmaster opponent, who's like. Um, in this case, almost 300 fillet points higher. Uh, so the classical system. So Fisher style, Bishop C4, and uh, very delicate, you know, moves. Queen E2 keeps eye on G4 and on C4, and now another delicate one coming up. Bishop D3, not not Bishop B3, which might be a tempting option. And now carefully considered move to prevent B4, A3. And now f4 with the idea of g4, <laughs> very aggressive stuff. Not really worrying actually about b4 uh, too much. So um, this this uh, aggression with the pawns um, is not really to smash directly with like g6 or anything. It's it's to do with this knight f5. Uh, the pawn mass is still going to be there, collecting, accumulating on the king side. Uh, but it's it's piece driven now. The attack, the pawns uh, support a breakthrough with with pieces. After this bishop b6, the knight comes to e7, and now this g6 and f6 are really like dangerous threats. So black, um, I went wrong, which is easy to do in this this kind of position. Um, let's see. Actually, this this remarkable defense, which the engine seems to think is equal, is hard to believe in this position. But let's have a look. So g6. Uh, queen h6. Why is it giving us equal? Is there nothing for white to try and get an attack? Maybe rook d5. Oh, rook d5. No, it's still strong. Still strong. Still advantage for white here. Well, surely something like rook e3. You'd think is threatening queen h7. If we give rook e3 a, a go, I cannot believe it. That black's better. With Bishop G2, <laughs> that is a real computer defense, and 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 why can't the thing be evicted? Because Queen B6, and now <laughs> there'd be lots of trouble. Oh blimey, on B2 and stuff. Ah, so that's how computers defend. Um, that's horrible counterplay now, where Black's clearly better. So the Grandmaster obviously missed this this cunning idea uh, that after G6, he could play Rook G8. And you know, if even though rookie three is ruled out, even if rook d5, rookie three there's bishop g2. So that was probably missed by the GM. This this very technical defence, bishop g2, missed by both players. I expect bishop g2. Oh blimey, the resources are amazing, aren't they? In chess, really. Queen h5. So anyway, black. You know, here's the critical moment after f6. So g6 wasn't played, but g takes f. And we just have the Black King being torn apart. These all these files being ripped open. Uh, so this is a really instructive uh, win in the Open Sicilian, I think, uh, from Jack against the much higher-rated um, Grandmaster. So after check, you know, the Grandmaster actually resigned. He saw his king was going to be moaned moaned down. Hope, hope you enjoyed that. Um, I certainly did. Comments or questions on YouTube. And I might leave this on Jack's Facebook page as a little present today. Thanks very much.